What's up YouTube, Thomas O here with the new film Hotel Mumbai opening this week. Since the film is about the terrorist attack in um, the Hotel Mumbai in India, I decided to do my top 10 favorite terrorism movies. I mean, this was a... I mean, to be honest, I wasn't really sure if I wanted to make this top 10 video because, I mean, terrorism is just... It's sickening, it's terrible, I mean... There's, of course, that New Zealand um, terrorism attack that just happened. It's really crazy to see what's going on in the world. But there have been some pretty interesting uh, terrorism movies over the years. So I decided, okay, I'll just go ahead and do a top 10 um, terrorism-based films, you know. Because it's always cool seeing movies where um, an action hero, whatever, uh, takes down, you know, a like a... Uh, where an action hero, you know, takes down a terrorist, you know? Sometimes I wish we have action heroes like those in real life, to be honest with you. I mean, can you imagine, um, some, like, they're actually being a John McClane or anything like, or a character like that to actually take down real-life terrorisms? So anyway, that being said, here's my top ten list. Alright, coming in at number ten will be Passenger 57. This is a really fun film. This movie got released in 1992, the year I was born. And, you know, in it, you got uh, Wesley Snipes as a child, as, um, who, you know, is, who pretty much takes down uh, some terrorists, uh, some uh, terrorists who uh, boards, like, an airplane. And, like, uh, pretty much Wesley Snipes, you know, plays the role of uh, John Cutter, who's, like, an undercover security operator. Who, you know, enters, like, um, who goes on the plane and, uh, you know, while he's on it, there's, like, a terror, like, peep, you know, terrorism, you know, taking, uh, control of the plane and he has to try to stop them and all. This movie is loads of fun. I mean, the whole film pretty much takes place on a plane. And Wesley Snipes, I mean, of course, it was at the hype of his career. Wesley Snipes was awesome here. You know, he really kicked loads of, um, butts. And you also have, uh, Bruce Payne was also in this, uh, a few other people. Let me pull up the cast list. Man, I miss Wesley Snipes. I wish he could maybe, like, uh, go back and do uh, more action movies. Because he's, I still want him to go back to do Blade, but God knows if that's ever going to happen. Like, the other cast here includes uh, Elizabeth Hurley, Tom Sizemore, Bruce Payne. Some really good cast members. I mean, this movie is... If you want like to watch an, a pure 90s action fun, check out Passenger 57. I think you'll enjoy it. Coming in at number 9 is Toy Soldiers. Now, this is where, um, you know... Where terrorists like seize um, control of a boarding school and a group of troublemaking uh, schoolboys, you know, decides to uh, re like take them down and all. Toy Soldiers is fun. I mean, it's it got released in 1991, I think 91 or nine or 1999, and it's you know led by uh, Sean Astin. Will Wheaton is in this. Yeah, this is a film worth checking out. It kind of felt like the movie Red Dawn. To be honest, I was going to uh, wonder if I should add between this or Red Dawn. Red Dawn is great. I love that movie, but I decided to put this on instead. Toy Soldiers is it's pure action fun. I mean, I guess you could say it's like, you know, if the characters of Stand By Me were action heroes. And that's what you get with this. I guess you could say it's kind of like Stand By Me meets Die Hard. That's what I really got from this. It's really fun, like... And it was really original when it got released, because you never really seen movies, like... Uh, other than Red Dawn, you don't really see many movies where, like, uh, the hero... Like, the action heroes are teenagers, or... Or, uh... High schoolers, or college students, or whatever. So I thought this was pretty cool to watch. Alright. Coming in at number 8 is Under Siege. 
Under Siege is loads of fun. Like, you've got Steven Seagal here. It's pretty much, I guess you could say it's like Die Hard on a ship. I guess maybe Die Hard meets Titanic if you want to look at it that way. And, I mean... And, of course, Steven Seagal, you know... There's, like, a terrorist that um, happens on, like, a ship. And Steven Seagal has to, uh... He plays, like, a chef, if you will. Who, um, you know, got to try to, uh... You know, take down the terrorism on the, uh, ship. This is really fun. Like, it got released in early 90s. I think 94 or 95. Somewhere around that era. Steven Seagal was great here. And they also did a sequel called Under Siege 2. Which sucked. But the first Under Siege is the best. And it has a really good cast too. Let me see some. Like, people here um, includes the likes of uh, Tommy Lee Jones, Gary Busey. I mean, if you want to see a movie where Steven Seagal takes down some terrorists, this is one for you. I mean, Steven Seagal is really awesome. When, like, I always say this. Steven Seagal, let's face it, he's not a good actor at all. But I will say one thing. He's a really great action star, you know. He's actually one, maybe one of my favorite action stars, and he was great here. And I kind of wish Steven Seagal could make some sort of comeback. Like, I think the guy is usually really... Like, when he's on his game, he could be really great when um, with these type of films. Alright, coming in at number 7 is Speed. Now here, Keanu Reeves plays a Los Angeles a police officer named Jack who, you know, angers uh, some retired bomb squad members. Um, member played by uh, Dennis Hopper who, like, by foiling um, his attempt to uh, take hostage. And so, like, he actually ends up applying a bomb on a, a bus. So, you know, uh, Keanu Reeves has to, you know, try to, uh, you know, uh, try to save people on the bus. Now this is here is Die Hard on a bus. That's what this really is. And also Speed had uh, the likes of uh, Jeff Daniels, Sandra Bullock. This was a really fun film. You know, this got released in 94, around 94, 95. It's really fun. Now check out the first Speed. Don't even borrow with the sequel. The sequel is awful. Speed 2 uh, Cruise, Cruise Control, whatever it was called. That's one of the worst sequels you ever want to see. The first speed is the best. And, you know, if Keanu Reeves ever announced they make another speed, I'm down to see one. I'll love to see another speed. Now, coming in at number six is United 93. Now, this is a really intense film. Because, of course, this is a movie um, about terror. It's pretty much about the 9-11 um, the terrorist attack. Where, um, you know, uh, t ter like terrorists, you know, go uh, hijack a plane. And this is pretty much about what happened on that day. Um, you know, where the plane, you know, cra like crash landed and stuff. Oh, man. This it's a really great movie. I'm going to... Right now, it's a good movie. But it's seriously a movie I cannot watch again. Like... I could maybe mainly just watch this movie just once, and that would probably be it. I, I mean, it was directed by Paul Greengrass, who has a ha who's no stranger to do movies about uh, terrorism. Like he did this, he did Captain Phillips. Uh, he also did that um, Netflix one. Uh, I can't remember the name. Uh, not night. Um, forgot the actual name, but he did like a Netflix movie um, about like a terrorism attack that happened years ago. Can't remember the actual name. Uh, but anyway, United 93 is fantastic, you know. And actors in this, I literally never used... Like, when I first saw this movie, I literally never even heard of Holly Andy, the actors, when I first saw this film. And, I mean, it's mainly... Like, most of them all, I guess you could say, were unknown at the time. It's like, you know, I think Olivia Derby was probably... Um, 
is probably the only actor in this movie I actually know of, to be honest with you. Because, of course, she was in Juno and all. But other than that, I have never really heard of any of these actors, which is always cool. It's always cool to see um, a movie with actors you never heard of and all. But, yeah, I mean, the ending will... The ending of this movie will leave you tears. I mean... Yeah, it, you know, I remember when 9-11 happened, you know, I was, I was, you know, a very young age, you know, when 9-11 uh, happened, and I remember when I was in school that day, and, uh, and, you know, uh, we had to, like, you know, leave, like, class, and all. I literally thought it was, like, a fire drill, and then I was like, wait, if it's a fire drill, why are we, uh, you know, having to leave home if it was a fire drill? Then I did not know about on um, that it was a 9-11 terrorist attack until, you know, I came home that morning and, oh man, that, boy. I was a very, um, young, uh, I was really young, um, at the time and I actually knew what was going on too. Like, I, man, it was, that was, that was definitely a really sad moment. Like, a really sad day, you know. Anyway, but 9 United 93. If you guys really haven't seen this movie, do yourself a favor and watch it. But one, I'm warning you now, you're probably going to watch this movie just once and that's it. Like, this is not really a movie you can watch over and over, you know? Alright, now, coming in at number five is pretty much another 9-11 based movie. And that is Zero Dark Dirty. Now, this is the movie where... <clears throat> Where SEAL Team 6, of course, you know, uh, hunt down and kill Osama Bin Laden. Zero Dark Thirty was great. I mean, it starred Jessica Chastain. Of course, it was directed by Catherine Bigelow, who also did um, The Hurt Locker. Of course, you also had uh, Jason Clark. Chris Pratt was in this. Uh, I think Joe Egerton was in this, too, if I'm not mistaken. James Gandolfini. Really great cast. And the movie actually scored a Best Pitch nomination and well-deserving. It's a great movie. It's intense. Like, there's um, a scene where, uh, like, the scenes where um, J.C. Clark and, uh, is, you know, talking to uh, one of the terrorists. And he's, like, you know, punching the guy and all that. Like, he is really torturing um, the guy. Oh, boy. J.C. Clark was great here. You know, Jessica Chastain was great. I mean... You know, uh, May 2011 was the best. I mean, because, you know, 9-11, of course, happened in 2001. And it's crazy how that it took that, like, that it took about 10 years to actually kill Osama Bin Laden, you know? And, yeah, if you guys haven't seen Zero Dark Dirty yet, check it out. It's a really good film. All right, coming in at number four is probably the only comedic one on my list. Now, I know, now this is more, I guess you could say, a parry of sorts, and that is Team America World Police. I simply love this movie. I mean, it's directed by, uh, you know, the guys who, who of course, gave us South Park, and it's about, you know, uh, puppets who are, you know, who's taking down uh, Kim Jong, Kim Jong Il, and um, his, you know, group of uh, terrorist people. This movie is loads of fun. It is funny. I mean, there's some, there is some sick, twisted humor in this movie. I mean, when I talk about sick, twisted humor, I mean sick humor, and I really love it. I mean, there's puppet sex scenes in this, which I'm not going to go into any details. And if you see the movie, you know what I'm talking about. There's also a really good song, um, and then that's it. That's uh, titled America for yeah. Every Fourth of July, I just play that. I just blast that song. Like seriously, we don't really have many uh, Fourth of July songs, and I got and I gotta say that um, Team America World Police song, America that America song during Team America, that there is my Fourth of July song. I mean, I play that every Fourth of July, and. I, I mean, this movie is, of course, from other uh, guys who gave us South Park. So you probably bet it's going to have some sick, twisted stuff in it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, if you guys never seen Team America, do yourself a favor and watch it. It is, you guys will die laughing with us. <laughs> and there's some stuff in, like, like I said, there's some stuff in this that, 
that's gonna be a little like don't watch this with um family or anything. Watch it with you know maybe watch it by yourself or watch it with uh people who could take this type of humor because there's stuff in this that will be awkward to watch with your family. Coming in at number three is Air Force One. Now this is actually one of my favorite non non Indiana Jones Star Wars Harrison Ford movie. Like, if I was to do a list of uh, my favorite nine um, Star Wars and Indiana Jones uh, Harrison Ford movies, Air Force One will be on the top of that list. I love this movie. Of course, you got uh, Gary Oldman as the villain. You got uh, Wendy Christian is, is in this. William H. Macy. Um, I think Wolfgang Pearson also directed this. Really great uh, film. And of course, um, I mean, it's pretty much Harrison Ford taking down a group of terrorists on a uh, on an Air Force One. That's pretty much uh, the gist of it. And of course, Gary Oldman plays the uh, terrorist leader, Avon. I was going to pronounce uh, the character's last name, but it's Avon Kosonov. Yeah, I was mispronounced uh, the character's name, but Her- I mean, Gary Oldman, that guy needs to play more villain roles. Like, he... How on earth has that guy never played um, played a Bond villain? Is still beyond me. He's great as as like these villain roles, and of course Harrison Ford has that classic uh, line, "Get off my plane!" I boy, I really stink at pulling off a Harrison Ford uh, talk. Anyway, yeah, if you guys have never seen Air Force One, check it out. I th- you'll enjoy it. It's, it's a really fun film. It's probably one of my favorite action movies of the 90s. It's that great. Coming in at number two will be True Lies. Now, everyone always has, has this at their, uh, as their favorite action movies of all times. Now, I love this movie, but it's not really my favorite of all times, to be honest with you. One of these days, I'll do my top 10 favorite action movies, but we'll see you there. Anyway, here, you know, you got Honest Schwarzenegger playing the role of Harry Tasker, who's like living, who like leads a double life. He, at, like at work, he is a uh, government agent with um, a license to do just about anything. While at home, he, you know, pretends to be a uh, dull computer salesman. And so, like one day, he's, you know, he is on like a trail of a, a stolen uh, nuclear weapon that are like, you know, that are in the hands of a uh, fantastic. Uh, Fantastic uh, terrorists, you know, when like something uh, more important uh, comes up. So, like, he finds he also ends up finding out, out that his wife is seeing another man played by the late great Bill Paxton. But, um, you know, she needs like some uh, event because, you know, she has, of course, these um, adventures of her life and all. Now, his wife is played by Jamie Lee Curtis, and there's like a really awesome scene that has Jamie Lee Curtis in those that made me say. That woman is just... Like, Jamie Lee Curtis is... I gotta say, she's actually not really that bad looking, to be honest with you. There's, like, this uh, strip scene with Jamie Lee Curtis in it that will make you wow. Like, you'll actually fall in love with Jamie Lee Curtis after seeing her in this. Of course, you got the great Tom Arnold here. Um, J- uh, James Cameron was great at directing. I really love this movie. I mean, it's, it's a really pure, fun action-adventure film. You know, some really good action in this. James Cameron did a good job at directing. Really amazing movie. I mean, if you guys still never see True Lies, come on, what are you waiting for? It's great. Now, my number one favorite terrorist movie of all time. That's pretty much my favorite action movie of all time, and... Come on, Die Hard. Number one is Die Hard. Come on, you got Al um, Al Rickman as <clears throat> sorry, you got Al Rickman as the terrorist leader Hans Gruber, who of course takes control of the uh, build like the um of the uh, corporation and like help people hostage, and it's up to John McClane to of course save them all. I mean, Hans Gruber is let's face it, he's one of the greatest villains of all time. Al Rickman as that role is great. Of course, Bruce Willis as John McClane. Come on. Come on, like I said. I kind of wish we had a John McClane in real Like, someone... I wish we had an action hero in real life to, you know, stop real-life terrorism from happening, you know? 
I mean, what's his name? This might be, um, change subject, but what's his name? Mark Wahlberg actually said, uh, one time that, um, because he was supposed to be on the, um, plane that, um, on that day, um, on that, um, uh, you know, the day 9-11 happened, and he was saying one time that, you know, if he was on that plane, 9-11 wouldn't happen because he would have, like, uh, took all those terraces down and all that. I tell you, I really wish we had an action hero like John McClane and all, because I tell you, we really need, like, we really need people to actually take these uh, terrorists down, you know, by, uh, you know, you know, by hands and all that. Because John McClane, this is a really cool character. You know, Bruce Willis, him as John McClane is, he's of course one of the greatest action heroes of all time. Of course, that air duct scene is iconic. Hot, you know, this is of course a spoiler, but come on, the movie got released in 1988. So, of course, the scene where Hans Gruber dies is iconic. This movie is just awesome. I mean, definitely check out Die Hard. I think y'all enjoy it. I mean, yeah, again, who who haven't seen Die Hard by now? I mean, come on. Die Hard is just, it's pretty much a great action movie, you know? Anyway, that's pretty much it. Let me do the quick run now. Number 10, Passenger 57. 9, Toy Soldiers. 8, Under Siege. 7, Speed. 6, United 93. Five Zero Dark Thirty, four Team America World Police, three Air Force One, two True Lies, one Die Hard. Now there's a few others ones that you know I probably could have added. Let me pull up the list. Uh, Charlie Wilson's War is a good one. The Hurt Locker. Um, Lions for Lambs is an alright one. All right, I really like uh. This Clint Eastwood movie, um, the Fifteen Seventeen to Paris, the one that um, where Clint Eastwood casts like real life um, war heroes, where they you know take like take down um, terrorism on a uh, on like a train. That movie got lots of bad reviews, and I don't care what anyone says. The Fifteen Seventeen to Paris is great. Yeah. Okay, I'm over it. Over exaggerating. It's not a great movie, but it's actually not that bad. Like I really dug the movie. I mean, of course, those actors wasn't going to be that great because, I mean, they're not really actual actors, you know, but they still played their parts really well because they were playing themselves, you know, so, anyway. A few others that I'd like to add, um, let's see. Never seen Black Friday. Uh, let's see. Home of the Brave is a pretty good one. Saving Jessica Lynch. Three Kings, you know, David uh, Fincher film. Argo is a really good one. I love that movie. Syriana. I didn't care for 13 Hours. I know lots of people really love that movie, and lots of people call it Michael Bay's best film, but I didn't care for that one. Let's see. Four Lions is the right one. Let's see, uh, Blown Away, Body of Lies, Casino Royale, Diamonds Are Forever, Dr. No, boy, James Bond took down lots of terrorists. Let's see, what's that Park Greengrass one that's on Netflix? Uh, let me check. Should have checked this before I went live, but. Oh, the uh, film. The film's title was uh, Twenty Two July." I don't really remember the uh, name of that film. <laughs> anyway, let me leave you guys. What are some of your favorite terrorist movies? Drop a comment below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell for more notifications. This here is Thomas L. Sign off.